Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Most musicians practice scales as part of their daily practice routine. And in this video, I want to talk about what you want to learn when you're practicing scales, some of the things that you need to know, and I'm also going to give you some ideas on how you can use that to build upon when you want to use this for making music. It seems to me that a lot of people practice scales and they're just trying to use it to learn how to play faster and move their fingers on the instrument and play some really boring melodies in their solos. And really, there are a few things where, if you think about it, you can actually get a lot more out of it. And for a lot of you guys, probably this video is going to be like a checklist where some stuff you already know and some other stuff might give you some new perspective and some new ideas for how to practice your major scales and how to take that into your playing. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about playing over chord changes and check out some interesting arpeggios and scales, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The first thing you want to check out if you're learning a major scale is probably just to play it on your instrument. So if we take the key of C major, that could be something like this. The other thing that you want to have in there really from the beginning is what notes are actually in this scale. So it makes sense to check out what are the notes in any kind of major scale that you want to play. In this case, it's kind of easy because it's just the C major scale. So um, you want to just know that that's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And of course, when you're playing it, you want to be aware that you're actually playing those notes. So you want to relate that knowledge to the way that you play the scale. So that would be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And in that way, you're already connecting some theory and having another way of organizing the notes within the scale and trying to have a system to work with when you want to understand how something sounds and how you can organize stuff in chords and arpeggios. This is really important. This way of learning the names of the notes in the scale is also something that's going to help you really just know the notes of the fretboard. Because if you realize that this is a G because you know that it's C, D, E, F, G in C major, and probably you also know that it's also G when you're playing it in uh, G major or uh, in F major. So if you've done that enough times, probably you will start to realize that this is actually a G even without thinking about the scale. And in that way, you're starting to just learn where the notes are on the fretboard. And that's also something that's really useful for a lot of other things. And also just for exploring uh, new ways of playing scales and arpeggios. If we relate this to an example where you're actually playing a solo over C major scale and just look at what you can use this information for and what you really need to know, then let's say that we're using C major again and uh, the chord that's being played is this C major seven. Now, if I want to play this note, then it's useful to be aware of the fact that that's a D. And uh, you can, of course, if you know the notes of the scale, you can count your way up there. Uh, you also want to be aware of the fact that it's played against a C major seven chord, uh, which happens to be the root of the key. But in this case, that doesn't really matter too much. It could be any chord in the scale. And then you want to realize that the note you're playing against the C here is a ninth. And that's going to give you some idea about how it sounds also. Counting within the scale is also going to give you um, some tools to have an idea about what the notes that you want to play will sound like. And that's going to make it easier for you to make some lines that actually make sense and that work well with the chords. The next thing you want to try to add on top of just knowing the scale and the notes that are in there is the diatonic chords and the diatonic arpeggios. So when you're trying to use the skill to improvise over a chord progression, then the chords that, are, that you're improvising on are actually contained within the scale. And that means that you want to know of the notes that you play, which ones are in the chord. And for the rest of the notes that are not in the chord, how do they work as uh, extensions or tensions against this chord? So the way you construct diatonic harmony is really just by stacking thirds within the scale. So if we take the C major scale, and then start to stack thirds. So if I do that from the from the root from C, then a third diatonic third up from C is E. Diatonic third up from E is uh, G, and then the next one would be a B. So now I'm, I have a C major seven. And if I do the same from D, then we start on D. Diatonic third up, that's F. Diatonic third up is A, and another diatonic third is C, and then I have a D minor seven. So you want to know how you stack the thirds and what kind of chords they give you. You probably want to know that by heart, uh, both as like knowing how to play the diatonic chords as chords, but also to play them as arpeggios, because that's what you want to use when you're improvising. Uh, so those exercises are going to be exercises like... Mm -hmm. 
And of course you want to know that it's C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, A minor 7, B after minus, and then back at C. You want to know what the chords are in the scale and you want to know where they are and how you can play them. And this way is a way of sort of practicing within the scale and also just so that you have an overview of what is going on. You also kind of want to be aware, and of course, if you already know the notes of the scale, you start to really be aware of that the notes of a C major 7 are C, E, G, and B. And even though they might be spread out in a different way when you're playing the chord, you can also recognize that this is a C major 7, and you will figure out a way to add a 9 to it because you know what the 9 is, because you already figured out that the 9 against the C is a D. So these kind of things are just really simple things if you really know the scale and if you really know the theory uh, so that you can figure out okay I want to add this to a chord or I want to use this in a melody and you have an idea about how it is related to the chord and you can figure out how that sounds and that's going to make it a lot easier to come up with some interesting lines when you're trying to solo. Here I'm using the seventh chords as sort of the basic diatonic chord that's really just because I'm coming from, from playing jazz where I think the basic chord that we talk about is a seventh chord. We don't really think from, from the triads, we start with a seventh chord and then uh, what kind of extensions and, and what kind of uh, alterations you want to add to a chord, that's really up to whoever's playing and improvising uh, either the chord or the solo. So of course you can do the same with triads, if you're playing a solo music where triads are more important and the, the principle is of course completely the same, so you would just stack uh, thirds twice instead of uh, three times, so you would get C, E and G, and then you get a C major triad, D minor. You can figure that out quite easily using the same idea. You want to do the same, and actually if you play jazz, you want to check out the triads as well, because they're really useful for putting on top of some of the chords and understanding that if you have a G7, if I add an E minor triad on top of that, then as a chord this is actually a G13. Uh, and of course also just how that sounds using that triad when I'm soloing. These are important things to check out as well and you want to relate the notes of the E minor triad in this case down to a G7 and figure out that it gives you the 13, the root and the third. Like this we've covered the diatonic harmony. You know what notes are in the scale, you know what chords are in the scale and that's really going to help a lot if you have to improvise over a progression that's in the key that is sort of represented by this scale of course. And then you can also take a little bit further because if you take any subset of notes out of a scale it will have a particular sound. There are a lot of options that you can get into with this. Uh, there are a few that I'm going to cover in this video because I think they're practical. Um, one is going to be pentatonic scales because while well, we're guitar players so we really know our pentatonic scales and we really use them a lot so that's a practical tool to, to have in there. Uh, and also because pentatonic as a sort of melodic sound is really something that's really important for modern jazz and a really big part of jazz. So if we take the C major scale then we have three different minor pentatonic scales in that. Uh, we have the one that's from the relative minor, so that's A minor. So we have an A minor pentatonic. Uh, we have one on the second degree, that's the D minor pentatonic. And we have one on the third degree, that's E minor pentatonic. And you want to check those out and you want to be aware of what notes are in there. Uh, of course that's not going to be that difficult because if you already know how to play a C major scale here and you know what notes is in the C major scale, you can probably also see what notes are in the pentatonic scales. Again, you're just connecting a lot of knowledge that you already have. Because you're just looking at using the C major scale as sort of a framework where you know all the notes and you then start to play the, the minor pentatonic scale, then you also start to know what notes are in those. And the thing you want to do with the pentatonic scales, especially if you're using them in a jazz context, is that you're superimposing them on other chords. So if you checked out, well, anything that I played almost, then you notice that I've used E minor pentatonic on C major chords. So the minor pentatonic from the third of a major seven chord, just all the time. And uh, that's a really useful thing to know that you can use that. And it's also a specific sound, uh, which for me at least is really part of like a uh, more of a modern jazz sound than, than anything else. And when I'm using the E minor pentatonic scale to make lines over a C major 7, then I'm relying on my knowledge of the C major scale and the C major chord, and then also of course uh, what the notes of the E minor pentatonic scale is against that chord. So I know that if I have the C root then the E is the 3rd, the G is the 5th, the A is the 6th, 
major 7, which is the B, and then we have the 9, which is the D. And I need to know that because when I'm making the melodies uh, with the E minor pentatonic scale, then I need to come. I need to have an idea about how I'm going to emphasize that. It's, even though I'm using that scale, it still has to sort of connect with the C major sound. So I need to still end on, for instance, the root of the scale, which is an E, but which is the third of the chord. So in that way, you want to relate these structures back to whatever chord you're playing on, and then see like where you want to uh, put the emphasis and where you want to have the sustained notes of your melodies. Another group of notes that's really worthwhile checking out, in my opinion, is the chordal arpeggios or the chordal harmony. And uh, in this case, it's, it's a smaller group of notes. I'm going to be working with uh, the three note chordal arpeggios. If I play that through the scale, then that sounds like this. And of course, you can also play those as chords. So here, when we have these types of small groups of notes, it maybe doesn't work that well uh, in this octave, um, then we have some notes that are not really any kind of chord that we can just immediately recognize. And in that way, we need to relate them to some of the chords that we play on to be able to use them. And the way you do that is that you figure out what notes are in there, and then you look at what are they no those notes against the chord. Just the same as I talked about you do you're doing with the pentatonic scales, or with, uh, with the triads, that are like upper structure triads, like using the E minor over the G7. Again, you're just taking the notes that are in the scale, so you can easily figure out what these notes are if you practice the scales and you know what notes are in there, and then you can easily figure out what notes are in the chordal arpeggios, and then you just look at, is that gonna be something that sounds nice on top of whatever chord I'm playing on, or whatever chord I'm trying to come up with something new on, and that's how you use it. Uh, so just to use it on a C major seven, you have to, of course, sit down and do a little bit of research in terms of this won't work because it has the third, the sixth, and the nine. This had one, well, this has the F in it, so that's less likely to be that great for a C major seven. It's a great G seven because you can see it's already a G seven chord. And the same works for for this one that it, as, long, as long as it has the F in there, it's not the greatest option. If you have to take out three notes and use on top of a C major seven. Uh, as a sort of specific sound, then probably the F shouldn't be in there because uh, that's not really going to convey the sound of a C major 7. So in this way you can sort of pick out some of the uh, different chordal arpeggios that you think sound nice, and in that way use this material and this way of thinking to generate some new material that you can get into your playing. Of course there are many different types of subsets that you can take out of a scale in terms of different types of pentatonic scales or arpeggios with extensions, sus chords and all those things, and um, I took these two because I find that I use them a lot, I see them used a lot, uh, especially in the more sort of modern type of, types of jazz, and I find that they're really important and practical for that reason, really. Um, and I think with the other ones, by now I probably have videos on most of them, because I made a lot of videos on different types of, uh, of pentatonic scales and stuff like that, uh, so if you're looking for something you can always just ask on the video, then maybe I can sort of point you to a video on it. I find that this way of working with scales, where you're not just trying to play a scale, but you're also really trying to be aware of what the notes are, what harmony is in there, and really trying to put that all together already when you're trying to practice your scales, uh, is much more efficient and much better because it's going to open up a lot of doors and give you some options. And it's also going to help you train to figure out what notes may or may not work on what chord. Or if something works, then um, to have an idea about why that is or why that doesn't work. And, and I think that's really important to have that in there. And it's going to make it easier for you to improvise and to come up with your own material. If you have a way of working with scales that you think works really well, that's maybe different. Or if you work on this way, uh, then let me know. I think most of us are curious on finding a good way of thinking about this. Because it's important. We spent a lot of time working on scales and technique and overview of the fretboard. So... Uh, it is something that's important to have a, a sort of a solid approach for, and probably it's better to have more ways of looking at it than, than few. So if you have another way of looking at it, then leave a comment on this video. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding solid methods and good strategies for exploring some of the great things and interesting stuff that are around jazz guitar and playing jazz and improvising in general. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. I'm very grateful for the support that I'm getting from my patrons, 
And it's because of that support that I can keep making videos every week. If you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.